Okay, um, so we've got an application. We are inside our application. In fact, here it tells you we are inside our application. It has just assigned a number. Okay, and of course, we already saw in the previous video how you can run this application by just clicking on run application. Now, sometimes what happens is that you build an application uh, and you want to delete it, right? Because there's something wrong with the application or you uh, want to recreate the application and so on and so forth. So you want to delete the application, you can just click here, delete this application. Okay, and then of course it'll ask you, are you sure, etc. And then it's going to delete the application. Okay, so now uh, we are inside an application. Now what I want to do is to show you how to add pages to your application. Okay, so let's do that. Um, in the lab documents that I have circulated with you, I have... Uh, shown you the process, the complete process, step by step. Uh, and there I asked you to create a new application and within that application to add a page, okay? So now we've got an application, except that I asked you to call that application as classic models. This time what I'm going to do is on this new test app that we've created, I'm going to create a page within this test app, okay? And as you already know, to create a page, we can create, click on create page. So I'm going to do that. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to use some of the tables from our classic models application and build pages for those, uh, for those tables. Right. So we'll start off by building a page for our employee table. In other words, we want to be able to browse employees, add, modify, delete employees. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say create page. In fact, the kind of page that we are going to generate is actually a, a report form combination. So when you get into employees, it's first going to show you a list of employees. Okay, not all employees. In this case, all employees because all the employees fit onto one screen. But if there are lots of employees, let's say hundreds of employees, then it'll uh, you want to show them by page and then be able to move back, forth, etc. Search for employees, all of that. So that's what will be shown first, the report. Then if you want to manage a particular employee within the report, right, which is to, let's say, make, let's say an employee's home address changes or, uh, you know, phone number changes, something like that. So you, within the report, you click on that particular employee and then you'll get a form that displays the details of the employee where you can go and make changes, okay? And of course, from that form, you can also delete an employee if you want. Okay, so I'm going to click on create page. And once again, just like we saw with applications, there are many different types of pages that Apex can help us create. In this particular case, we are trying to create a form on employees. So I'm going to create form. And within form, you'll see there are further options. So all I have to do is just click mm -hmm. on form. Okay, and then it says you want form on a table with report. This is what I'm saying. We are going to create uh, a report form combination and this first option does exactly that so since it's already selected I'm going to click on next okay now what's going to happen is we are now in the process of creating two pages the first page is the report the second page is the form right so we'll be going through several options now and you need to pay a little careful attention okay uh, it's, so it's going to ask us lots of questions so that it can create those two for those two pages just the way we want them to be okay implementation interactive let it be page numbers two for every page you create uh, apex assigns a page number page number one was actually our home page which is here so it just sequentially assigns a number we don't really have to do anything uh, for this page okay uh, so page name it says report one i'm going to call this page as employee report okay it's just a name we're giving there's nothing page mode let it be normal region title don't worry about it now region template interactive report let it be and here it says breadcrumb do not add breadcrumbs to page that's the default okay now what is a breadcrumb in general applications you'll find on top of the application you'll see the path by which you reached a particular page Okay, It'll, it's like the menu structure that you see when you browse in Windows and so on, right? You see the whole path. You started at the C drive, then you 
within the C drive, you went to users, within users, you went to your page, and within your page, you went to this particular course, that whole path, right? So that's what is a breadcrumb. So in any page of the application, if you have a breadcrumb, you'll be able to see how you got to the page, and you'll also be able to navigate to intermediate points by clicking on the breadcrumb. That's what a breadcrumb is. So if you want to add a breadcrumb, you can say, go ahead and uh, add in a breadcrumb. Okay, there's no cost involved in doing this. So if you click it, if you want to add it, if you don't want, don't add it. That's fine. So we've selected the first uh, page option, say next. And then it says, okay, you're creating a page. You're going to base the page on which table? Okay. Now, a page doesn't have to be based on just one single table. It can be based on a join of several tables, but we won't really go into that in this course. Okay. Uh, the view owner, that's going to be your workspace name. You can change it, let it be. And here we can select the table. Okay. So I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to select now the employee table. Employee, not emp. Okay. But the emp table, which you see just above employee, is a demo table that comes with Apex. Employee is our table that we loaded earlier. Okay. So I selected the employee table. It says it's a table because there's a concept of a view in a database which we have not discussed. Okay. So then I create next. Okay. And then it says, do you want to attach this page to a navigation menu option? Right. Remember when you run the application, there's a menu that appears on the left hand side and then you click on the menu to select whatever you want to do within the application. In the home page of the application, in fact in every page of the application, the menu will appear on the left hand side. Okay. So now in order to manage employees, we will need some facility to get into it. Right. So from the home page, we can click on employees to uh, click on a menu option to get into it. So yes, we do want a menu option. But we don't already have any menu options in our application, so we want to create a new navigation menu entry. Right? If it, it might be possible sometimes that you created a page, you made some mistake or you didn't like it, you made some changes, okay, you're regenerating the page. Now when you regenerate the page, you wouldn't create a new navigation menu entry. You'll just say, okay, go and attach it to the already existing navigation entry that I had created earlier when I created the page. Okay, this time we're creating a new navigation entry and this navigation entry, which is the menu, uh, which we, I'm just going to call it as employees. Okay, that's what will show on the screen on the menu. Okay, we don't want this to be under any navigation, an existing navigation entry, right? Because the menu can also be hierarchical. I'm just saying, no, just put it at the top level. Okay. So now it says, okay, we are still in the process of creating reports. Notice it's saying report columns. And we've already selected our table. By default, Apex has said, well, you want to show all the columns of the table, right? So it, uh, the col available columns will be shown here. All the selected columns are here, right? The fact that there's nothing available, everything has been selected, tells us that it has selected all of them. If you don't want to show some particular column, you can always select it. And then you click the left arrow and it will go away there. Right. So right now we want everything. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay. Now if you want to select only a subset of columns based on a where clause, you could put that in here. Okay. But uh, we're not do doing that. We're going, we want to show everything. Okay. So that tells us in the report which columns we want to be displayed. Okay. Now I had earlier told you that from the report you can select a particular employee to manage to edit or delete or whatever right so on the report you'll see on the left hand side it shows an icon for editing okay so you can select any one of these icons you want okay so i'm going to just select let's say uh, this icon you could select any okay or in fact if you have other images you can put all that okay so the icon is selected i say next okay then now it got all the information it needs for the report page. Now it's switching and asking us information about the form page. Right? That is the uh, form that you need to edit a particular employee. Okay. Again, it's giving the one up page number, page number three, the report. Home page is page number one. The report page will become page number two. And this form page is going to become page number three, page more normal. 
page name, uh, I'm just going to call it employee form. Okay. Region title, forget it. That's something internal, let it be. Okay. Again, I say next. Okay, this is taking a little, okay, it's come. So now it wants information about the primary key of your table. Okay, our table has a primary key, so I'm going to say select primary key column. And from the table, it's picked out the fact that employee ID is the primary key. And remember, I said, let every table of yours have a single primary key. In other words, a primary key made up of just a single column of its own. So we won't worry about column two. Uh, you know, life becomes simpler if you have a, a unique primary key for, you know, a simple primary key for everything without any uh, composite keys or without any key migration or any of those things. Okay, so we do that and say next again. Okay, so now, remember I had, uh, when we spoke earlier, I had talked about how uh, we want to have auto numbering for the uh, auto numbering for the primary key of every one of our entity types right that is if you are creating the first employee the ID will be one when you go and create the second employee automatically it will put the ID two, right? and so on so we don't have to worry about the employee ID generating the next employee ID knowing uh, which IDs have already been used up we don't have to worry about any of those things okay uh, so that's what uh, this is asking about Okay, and in fact, when we selected auto numbering in our uh, Oracle uh, SQL developer data modeler, that automatically created whatever the database needs. And that is what is called as a trigger. Okay, so we are going to say yes, use an existing trigger. So that's the default which is there. Say next. Okay, now it's asking you on the form which columns do you want? Which columns from the table do you want to display on the form? I'm going to say I want all of them. So I click on the uh, two arrows there. I want all the columns. If you don't want all of them, you can leave out some of them. But in our case, I think our tables are fairly straightforward. We could just use all of them for all the purposes. Okay, so then it's asking you on the form page, do you want to be able to add a new employee? That's what insert is. Do you want to be able to modify an existing employee? That's what update is. Do you want to be able to delete employees? That's what delete is, right? So if let's say you don't want any employees to ever be deleted from the application, then you can say no if you want. Okay, but I'm going to keep it as yes. We all the functionality. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to provide you with a form, and from, from within the form, you can do all of these things. Now I say next. Now it's got everything it wants. It's showing you all the options that we selected. And it just says confirm. I say OK, create. So now it should go ahead and create our new page. OK, so what it has done is it has created the new page, uh, the, the report and form combination for the employee. And it has now taken us into the screen to edit the employee report. If you want to make any changes to the report, you can do that here, okay? We'll come back to this later. So right now, I'm just going to say, run this page. I want to look at what this page looks like. So use this icon here to run the page, okay? So look at what happened. We said employees is the name of our navigation menu. There it is. Home page, we already know. If I click on it, it goes back to the home page. We saw that. I click on the employees page. It comes to the employees page, shows us all the employees. Okay, and then we can scroll. It's showing us the first 23 employees. If there were hundreds of employees, it would have done the pagination by itself. Now I can go and type in something to search here. So for example, there's an employee uh, called uh, George Vanuf. So I'm going to type George here, press enter. And it, go, it went and found that particular employee. Okay, so I can uncheck this and it will go back to the original thing okay so here if I want to add a new employee I can do that I can click create and it will show the form to create a new employee okay and this is the icon I chose to edit a particular employee so that's also here so let's say I want to edit William Patterson 
I click on the edit icon and it's showing us the form on which we can this is the form remember we chose the employee form as the name of the uh, of the form so that's what it's in and then here it's saying employee report slash employee form that's the breadcrumb so if I want to go back to employee report I can click on this it'll go back okay or I'm going to click again on Patterson and come back into that old screen okay let's say I want to uh, change the job title of uh, Patterson to uh, sales director okay I can do that or I can delete the employee if we want okay so all of these things are possible I can say now apply changes and that's done okay so this is how a form a, a report form combination works okay now for most uh, many entity types in your application you will create a report form combination but you won't do this for all entity types okay specifically uh, let's take sales orders right for sales orders you typically won't create a report form combination instead you will create what is called as a master detail form we look at that in the next lab so right now in this lab all we want to do is to be able to add simple pages of this kind okay now let's go back into one of the employees here okay now one thing you notice is it's not showing the employee ID okay it's showing all the other features all the other columns but it's not showing the employee ID we may want to see the employee ID okay if you want to do that what you have to do is to edit this form and then see the uh, you know make changes there okay how do you edit the form it's a page I mean how do you edit this page you can edit the page by going back to the main application screen and clicking on the appropriate page but a simple way is to just use this menu developer menu that appears at the bottom click on edit page 3 okay and then it's it shows this this is where we can edit it now notice that it's got a lot of other options which we are not going to look at here breadcrumb notice here uh, it's all there but if you scroll down you see page items and here it's showing you all the items on the page and if you look at employee ID you see that there's a small icon next to it you know there's an eye and a line going through it it's telling you that it's not a displayable field it's a hidden field right in fact if I hover my cursor over it it says type hidden that's why it was not showing up on the form I want to make it show up so I can click on employee ID here notice that here the properties of the selected thing up here it says type hidden oh okay so I select this and then I say uh, I want it to be display only right because we don't want people changing the employee ID because this is a automatically generated primary key changing that would be disastrous so I'm saying make it a display only field and then I can save it and then we can run it notice now it's showing the employee ID okay but oops it's not showing the label next to it as employee ID for some reason it's calling the label as new okay we need to fix that so I go to employee uh, edit page okay and then I go here it says label you know the same thing is selected employee ID and said label is new no I want the label to be employee ID. employee ID okay again I can save I can run it and there you go it says employee ID etc another nice thing you notice here is next to some of the fields you've got an asterisk appearing okay now that says that those are required fields meaning if you try to let's say create a new employee okay so I'm going to go back into uh, into uh, the report I can do that by clicking on this and then I can try to create a new employee okay so employee ID no it's going to assign that's an auto number so we're not going to do anything there let's say the employee ID we're going to create is uh, uh, 
Uh, last name is Jackson. First name is uh, Joseph. Okay, I'm going to leave the first name blank. Okay, uh, email. Uh, ABC.com. I'm going to leave the office code blank, manager ID blank, job title blank. Okay, because not, all of those are not required fields, so I'm going to leave them blank. Or job title, let's say, uh, office manager. Okay, now if I try to create it, I should get an error message because I have left a required field as blank. Okay, now how did this become a required field? Remember, these tables were created based on our database design in Oracle SQL Developer Data Modeler. Right. So in data modeler, for the employee entity, we said first name and last name are both required attributes. That's why it's showing up as a required attribute on my screen. So if I say create, it should show an error message. Okay, it's saying emp first name must have some value. Okay, okay. So that's the error message we got. Okay. So now I'm going to say Joe. And this time when I create it, it's done. Okay. So Joe Jackson should be somewhere here. Suppose I Select search for Joe. Oh, okay, there's Joe Jackson, the one who created, we just created office code, manager ID, it's all blank, everything is good. Okay, so that's the whole process of creating a simple report form combination page. Okay, now uh, typically you will do this for many of your entity types, uh, but for entity types, uh, you know, for entity types which are associative entity types, Typically, you will not create a, a form report combination like this. Instead, you will do what is called as a master detail form. We'll look at that later. For this week, all we are worried about is being able to create these simple uh, things.